Yes, you're sitting in my chair. I guess that means you're sitting in my lap today, huh? You're a pretty rotten dog. Yes, this, this is a rotten dog. It's what it looks like when you have a rotten dog. He is thoroughly convinced that my lap is the only place in the world he's supposed to be. Which I guess for a lap dog is not a bad thing. It was when I had a Siberian Husky that was convinced he was supposed to be in my lap at almost 100 pounds. That's a lot of dog. You know, I spent the last week at NRB, the National Religious Broadcasters, and had a good time. Made a lot of new contacts. Uh, promoted some of the ministry stuff that we've been working on and the partners that we've been working with, and it was a really cool opportunity. Um, I, I ran into a little bit of a problem both going and coming back, and while I was there, uh, it was expressed in a little different way. While I was on my way to NRB, I decided that since I was driving alone, it would make sense to break the drive up into two days as opposed to trying to drive 11 hours in one day. If I'm not mistaken, there are any laws against that when you're driving alone to drive more than, I think it's eight hours or something like that. So I decided to stop at my daughter's in Little Rock and spend the night there. And so I texted her early on and said, hey, I'm coming through. Do you guys have plans? Everybody can be around. We want to have dinner. And she promptly texted back and said, yeah, the boys will be up. They're going to have an earlier dinner, but, you know, we can have dinner. We'll, we'll cook a steak for you. So I thought I was being funny when I went on Facebook and said, hey, I'm going to be in the Cabot area. Anybody want to have dinner? <laughs> I thought she would go, no, 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 we have dibs. But instead, she sent me a text message with crybabies because other people replied and said, yes, we'd love to. <laughs> and she didn't respond fast enough. But I was able to connect with my friends and tell them, uh, let's actually schedule a coffee on my way back through, because I'll be doing the same thing when I leave Nashville to go back to Dallas. I'll stop in Little Rock. We'll have coffee. And it was interesting that our conversation over coffee turned the way that it did. I say that because neither one of us had an agenda. We just, we see each other uh, once a year. We met about three years ago. And... Uh, husband and wife team that usually when I see them it's me by myself because I don't always travel with my wife but they met my wife and uh, would have loved if she was with us but she couldn't go because she had to work so it ended up just the three of us in a Starbucks and we sat down to talk with no particular agenda nothing in our minds that we wanted to talk about just to have a cup of coffee and hang out it turned into five and a half hours of conversation almost six hours of conversation and it was really good conversation. It was really deep conversation. But there was one reoccurring thing that we kept coming back to, and that was the number of times that you have uh, a would-be friend or someone that you might call a friend or someone, someone that you've done business or ministry with, and you realize that you've just grown apart. Your ideas, your values, your goals, the things that you understand versus what they understand, they, they become different. And it's, it's really challenging when you realize the gulf that that creates between you, when your relationship begins to evolve into something that it was early on. Now, I, I want to make a strange contrast to that statement, because I've reached the place where I met people at NRB, probably a dozen or so, that we exchanged business cards, and I said, you know, a large portion of what I do in communicating with the world is on social media. Facebook, YouTube, iTunes podcasts, that's kind of the world that I live in right now. It's a, that's a big deal for me. It's a, a huge amount of influence. And, you know, I, I even shared a video last week. Uh, Nelson in Nigeria had taken some of the videos that I put online and some that I produced for him individually and put on a leadership conference. That's the kind of influence I like to have. To know that if I'm putting the content out there and it's worthwhile, that other people are sharing it. That, that they're sharing it and doing something with it. Not just hitting the share button or the like button. While those are awesome, doing something more with what God's giving us to, to create and to, to share ideas. And yet when I would meet these people and say, that's kind of my platform, that, that's kind of where I work, they would say, well, let's connect on Facebook. And then they would walk back by the booth later and go, I, I tried to connect with you, but... You're already over your 5,000 friends limit. And what I know about the way Facebook works is I can't add any new friends 
new acquaintances, people that I build a new relationship with, to my list of friends, once I've reached 5,000, without deleting friends. So now the question is, who do I delete? Who do you delete out of your life? Who do you, who do you purge out of your life? Is it the people who haven't sent you a message in a long period of time? Is it the people you haven't talked to in a long period of time? See, one of the guys that I tagged on this Facebook post is another influencer in social media. He's a speaker. He's a TV host. His name is well known. He lives in an entirely different geographic community than I do. We don't see each other face to face very often at all. But when we do, we're like kindred spirits. And a lot of the things that he believes and teaches, I believe and teach. And we never compare notes. It just turns out that Kenny Arnett and I have a lot in common from a, a leadership standpoint, from a media standpoint, from a faith standpoint. We share a lot of the same ideas. And so we constantly promote each other, especially when, when, a, when a new great idea comes out or a new way of expressing it. It was like social high five, great idea, great content. But there's somebody else that I tagged on this post that we've been doing business and ministry together now. 20 years this year, we met in 1998. Actually, we met in 97 and started working together in 98. And that's Mike Arnold. And Mike Arnold and I don't always agree on things. But we respect each other's intelligence. We respect each other's faith, even though we don't always come to the same conclusions. We respect the way the other does business and, and raises family and educates children. And we homeschooled our children for most of their lives. And Mike still does. The values and the qualities that we stand behind and that we stand up for, the things that we fight for, uh, they're very much the same. We don't do it the same. And I know we've had our differences. We've had our loud voices raised arguments. Uh, but he's a friend that I respect and trust. And when he calls me out on something, I take it to heart. I don't always respond that way. Sometimes I'll just tell him to shut up. But I'm listening. And I'm asking myself, is there a chance that he's right and I need to make a change? And I value people like that. Those are not the kind of friends that I purge from my list. The kind of people that I purge from my list are the ones that sent me a friend request, uh, then sent me a solicitation to join their MLM, and then from time to time, they'll send me a Facebook private message, and it's really just spam. And aside from that, I have no contact, no relationship. And they, they never watch the morning videos. They never comment on anything that I post or say. It's, it's like they really just they don't care. They probably added me and then forgot they added me and don't, really, don't even know why. Those are the people that I'll have to say goodbye to for now as I make room for other people who want to be more engaged in a conversation. I have to ask, though, is there a chance that outside the world of social media that you have people that you consider to be friends for whom you really have no strategy as to why they're in your circle of friends or circle of influence or why they should not be? I believe Charlie Tremendous Jones and Zig Ziglar and Dale Carnegie and Napoleon Hill were all right when they said you will become the same person you are now with the exception of two things. The books you read and the five people you surround yourself with. Those five people in your inner circle, the ones that speak into your life, the ones that answer the tough questions when you're asking them, the ones that ask the tough questions you haven't been ready to answer yet, those are the people that will shape your life. And you need to make tough decisions about who those people are going to be. There may be people in your inner circle right now that, that you need to purge. You need to ask yourself, why are they there? What do they invest in me? What do they challenge me to do to make me a better me? And if you can't answer that question honestly, it might be time to move on. It just might be time to move on. Those relationships will be critical in the who that you'll become in the future. Do the people 
in your inner circle line up with the vision that you have for your life? Do they match up with your core values and principles and the things that you've already decided this is who I am and what I'm supposed to do? If the answer to those questions are no, not so much, and never really thought about it, now's a good time to thought about it. You should apply some thinking time to the question of friendships, loyalties. Now, surely there will be people in your life that you're friendly to, that you don't necessarily trust with every deep, dark secret or every new revelation or every new idea. There are some people I share ideas with, and I intentionally share things that I know are deep. And when I watch their eyes glaze over, or I watch them check their watch or their phone because what I'm saying doesn't really interest them, I know this relationship will be surface, it will probably be distant, and it probably won't be for very long. I'm okay with that. I have a strategy for that, and I know what to expect. If you don't already have a strategy in place for that, would you take some time to do that today? To ask yourself the question, who are the people in my inner circle and how did they get there? And why do I keep them there? And is it time to swap some out? It's a tough question to ask, but it's a very valuable question to ask. And I hope you'll take time to do that today. I'm Jay Lauren Norris and you've been watching Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Okay, Mocha, you're snoring now. You've enjoyed this way too much, but it's time to go. Now, there he goes. Have a good day.